aid, no father could be present. So there really ought to be a hashtag, bring back our fathers. In the absence of a black male presence, y'all not talking back to me, then the family is no longer defended. Why is this a problem? When a black woman comes to church, she has in fact a 50 to 60% chance of the whole family coming to church with her. But when a black man comes to church, it is an 85% chance that everybody is going to come. So now we come the churches that are just feminized with a church full of women but you got a mosque full of men it says that men are not not that they are not spiritual but they want a place of discipline and order and focus men do not want to come to church just for an emotional outpour of turn to your neighbor without giving me any instruction any direction or any information men are thinkers where women are feelers y'all are getting ready to miss this here. It does not say that women do not think but women are more emotional than men are. So a lot of neo-Pentecostal churches miss the move of God because they suggest if you are not shouting and screaming, you are not spiritual and you are not saved. That is not true. When it is that Jesus taught on the mountainside, men weren't running around shouting and lifting up hands but they made up in their mind when I leave out of here, I'm I'm going to do different for my business, do different for my family, do different for my community. But because we have westernized our worship experience, everybody want to shout and sashay because we made the church comfortable for men not to be men, but to be sanctified sissies. So it allow themselves to be masculinized. It's like betatization through a thousand concessions. The wife constantly asks the husband to give and give and give and give and give. And then she basically ends up in this dominant position that she never wanted to be in. And masculine wives, I'm telling you, sometimes they are the death of the, the man, the marriage, the household, just absolutely miserable. Because I got to tell you the truth, folks. I got to tell you the truth. When it comes to bullshit, big time, major league bullshit, you have to stand in awe. In awe of the all-time champion of false promises and exaggerated claims, religion. No contest. He's out of line, but he's right. in women's labor it doesn't worry me at all. I don't like it. Why don't you like it? I'd rather be the way I am. I like the enemy husband's thumb. <laughs> I think women are in great danger of being dominated by women, being told to liberate themselves by doing what other women want them to do. <laughs> I have, okay, I have a whole theory that like the church is actually like a homemaker and like it's actually like a, a the best, your Sunday best. You know the worst Look thing about it is a young man. Because you know, the church is a young okay, man, okay. and the old woman imagine, looks at you with her eyes. Imagine if the pastors came forward. Okay, imagine if they <laughs> said, okay, like because that, like they'll say they'll say you can be saved, right? Like the like the hoes, they'll be like hoes, come to church. I mean they don't say it like that, but so they basically say hoes, come to church. If Jesus can't save these hoes, why are you trying? The pastor has a truth claim to make, fellas. It's a simple one that will be proven in this very episode. What is the truth claim, you ask? That Christian women are responsible for the failure and reproach brought against marriage today. Imagine the hundreds of weddings that have happened over the weekend. 10-30% of the brides will stay married to their husbands. If you took those odds to Vegas, you would be barred from the casinos. Out of mercy. Let's look. Make this even more apparent. Out of 100 weddings, 10 to 30 brides will stay in their marriage? With this fact alone, we can confidently affirm. Christian women destroyed marriage in America. I will mic drop right about here. Let's go. Similar, I don't want to say this, but similar to a club environment. The more attractive women you 
attracted yeah, his yeah, club. The more men yeah. the more willing, <laughs> willing with their hand open, men to table bottles is gonna. Who's got more so money, men or the women? Right. So the men are gonna come and spend their money. The it men put notes in the charity box. Because here what is the like put, when you're young as well, yeah. When you're young, yeah, it's like you, you're not necessarily just going to your local church. You're going to the popular church, the church that's popping. Yeah. That's got that young. Mm. Good looking environment. That's mm. the one you're going, and you're going there in your best. You're mm. waking up early Sunday morning mm. in your drip. Like what, <laughs> yo? Yeah, even, but even in the church, like <laughs> I remember being in, and I've always been me, so I've always had these thoughts. But I remember being like younger, and they would say, "Make a list of the things you want in your future husband." And I'm like, "Why don't they say that to the men?" Men, it says that men are not not that they are not spiritual, but they want a place of discipline and order and focus. Men do not want to come to church just for an emotional outpour of turn to your neighbor without giving me any instruction, any direction, or any information. Men do not thrive in emotional centers that try to sound like they know the Lord God. Men aren't fed by the music which lasts for nearly two hours with 30 minutes of what could quite possibly be identified as preaching. Men aren't moved by these type churches any more than men moved by the Lifetime movie channel. Men are drawn to God's strength and truth, his orderly church, his perfect word, and his promises. Men do not grow in women's Bible studies which are pretty much their churches. We can't with women jumping, screaming, crying, and yelling, all the whole claiming this is outworking of the Holy Spirit, even though there is zero Bible verses that support that feminine, idolatrous beliefs system courtesy of false teachers. Last but certainly not least, God knew women would try to pervert and molest his church. With that came a command, 1 Corinthians 14, 33, 35, 36, NASB. Translation for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. If they desire to learn anything, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is improper for a woman to speak in church. Was it from you that the word of God first went forth, or has it come to you only? Amen. What we can learn in those powerful verses tells you all you need to know on the state of a church. If you visit a church, see the loud boisterousness of women and effeminate men, club-style lighting and sound system, you can safely exit that church since God has never stepped in that corrupt building. We are men of God, not men of women. Make a list of what you want in your future wife, but the problem is none of the girls in the congregation can meet that. Mm. Failure. All in, they're saying, oh, I want this, I want that. And then after a month or two, you can just tell that they're still out there just playing around. Um, okay. Um, well, all men are like that. I mean, that's what I'm trying to understand. I mean, uh, yes, it seems like it's getting like that. Yes, really. Maybe it's where I'm located. Well, where where yeah. do you live? Dallas. She forty two. Huh? No, no, They're Dallas. Married. No, Dallas has someone. I'll be in Dallas either this week or next week. I'm coming to Texas because we got a problem, and I live most of my adult <laughs> life in in Dallas. What do you go to? Oh, it's happening here in Dallas. What do you go to church? Me and my girlfriend. What do you go to? Uh, don't know, what do you go to church? Concord. Uh huh. When's your last relationship? My last relationship was about two years ago. Two years ago, and who ended that? I did. Why? <laughs> because he ended up being married. What do you mean? Even duct tape can't fix stupid ended up being married he was married when you met him he was married when i met him and right. i had no idea that he so was how old are you married you're 42 42 mm -hmm. you can't run a background check on a dude <laughs> well that's that's how i ended up uh no i usually don't do stuff like that but that's how i ended up knowing that he was married so basically what you're trying to get me to accept is all the men in dallas are fuck boys and losers and you <laughs> and you and i'm just gonna say no man relationships are reflective because i know plenty of men in dallas that don't fall into that category uh um, oh well i haven't met them well uh, what's the most important thing that you've learned from your past relationships a lot of women have mental health issues Mm -hmm. ding, well, ding, let's, ding. let's dig into that a little bit deeper. Do you want to be married? I do. You have any I children? Do. I don't. You want children? I do. Right on. 
so it, it, the problem is men, not not the women, not you. Allegedly. What are you looking for in a man? What are you, look, what are you looking? What are you looking for in a man? Honesty. Um, I mean, we're are we all looking for the same thing? No nope. women. Nope. No. I want someone who's in the church. Foreshadowing is a narrative device in which suggestions or warnings about events to come are dropped or planted. Which leads me on to Proverbs 31.3 from the actual Bible. It states, Do not give your strength to woman, or your ways that which destroys kings. First of all, don't give your strength to women. Like, what does that mean? Don't give your, your money, yourself, your essence, your who you are to women, because that has brought kings down. This is how powerful women are. We have the ability to bring down kings. Mm -hmm. You know, I want someone really? who has a great job. Why do you I want, want someone who's church? easy on the Why eyes. do you want them to be in the church? Uh, I mean, they don't have to be necessarily like active in the church, and but I would like for them to be a Christian. I should say. Why? I would like for them to have the same faith that that I do. I think. Okay, it, so it, how's the uh, so? You go to Concord. Is the pastor helping you find a man? He is not, and I actually know my pastor really well. I've never talked to my pastor about this. Really? How long have you been in Concord? I, I, I mentor his daughter. Wait, wait, hold up a minute. Did she just say she doesn't talk to her pastor about her being single, and she mentors his daughter? Let me ask you something, gentlemen and ladies. Would you let Brittany Renner mentor your daughter? Would you let Kim Kardashian mentor your little girl? Will you let Lady Gaga or Madonna to mentor your daughter? Why would you ever entrust your daughter with the adulterer? She's in that church unrepentant and is teaching the pastor's daughter. Concord preacher, you have a whore mentoring your daughter who committed adultery with a married man and unrepentant, who in the blue hell wants their daughter mentored by a known body bag lady. She ain't a wife. She is stupid by definition, not derogatory. And she is promiscuous still. And she claims to be saved, delusional. What is a prostitute going to mentor a young lady for? Teach the girl going rates for sex work? How to be a hypocrite? What is happening in the world today? When did a willful whore and adulterer? When did they become mentor capable? Unreal. Why would you not talk to your pastor about this? Here's the issue that I have with these people. So if you're holy roly, there have been several women that Mr. Sam have had conversations with who are extreme Christians. That's these 30 year old women, 40 year old women who are still virgins, who are most likely socially awkward. They're extremely religious people and live a very disciplined lifestyle in that category. And then when Mr. Samuels talks to them and try to figure out and ask them, well, hey, are you in a church working with a pastor and in some type of singles ministry searching for other men who also hold your same beliefs? They never say yes. Why? Okay, if this is if Christianity is the case, man, like we can go down that path. Are you actively working in a church or with a pastor or an environment that fosters Christian marriages in an arranged way? That is the problem. I, have, I am a part of a church that does do that. However, as a result of COVID recently, um, COVID there have only been... happened in 2019, ma'am. You ain't. I understand. Years. First of all, let's get one thing straight. Crack is cheap. I... And that tells me these women are not really as religious as they claim to be or to have no interest in actually dating and actually meeting someone. Because if they actually did, they would be in these churches, in these singles ministries, meeting another square like them. There's no knock to them for being a square. I'm a square. I'm just not a religious square. Keep it moving. Brother Coop is 100% right in his assertions. This woman is as saved as Jezebel. And we all know how she ended. She was so toxic, her own progeny and husband was doomed after the marriage vows weren't even dry. Fake Christian women like this littered the dating scene with their fake and fraudulent claims of loving God, following the commands of the Lord God and in total submission to their God. The church is arranging Christian marriages, but she isn't participating. Look, I am going to call it as the pastor did from an episode. Look at your wife's mother. If her marriage ain't reflective of what the scriptures ordain a marriage to be, they weren't raised to be wives, but true trans women. Yes, you heard me. I am calling my wife, your wife, the pastor's wife. So many wives are taught to be men until it's time to whore themselves out for cheap sex to make cheap kids. Because when it's sexy time, 
That seems to be the only time these women can perform a female function. This is why non-believers doubt God and marriage is a dumpster fire. 70% of women initiating divorce tells us all we need to know about her character, or lack thereof. There is no God in her life but the Mr. Potato Head God. All seriousness. All, all joking aside. You want a man who's in church, but you're not working with the church to help you find a man. It makes no sense. Mm-hmm. And I also said they use the church thing as like a disqualifier. Like they'll say, oh yeah, I'm religious. But they really just use that to disqualify the dudes that they don't really like. Women make rules for dudes they don't like and then break all said rules for the dudes they do like. You know what I mean? Women I've had tell me doesn't get down like that or she doesn't do that because of her religious beliefs. And then the same night that we met, she's doing the same exact thing that she said she wouldn't do. I don't need to say what I'm talking about. Y'all know women make rules for dudes they don't like and break them for dudes that they do like. Yeah. Um, is it that you want a man in church or you just want somebody to who is a Christian? Life? Yep. I mean, who is a Christian? <laughs> <laughs> I said, but why? Why do I want someone who's a Christian? Why do you? Want because I want someone who has the same faith as me, who has the same beliefs as I do. I don't, but I don't buy that, man. Because if you did, you'd be working with the church to help you find a man. Exactly, and, and if that's you're... the first thing you'd be looking for is a Christian man. Because uh, was your last boyfriend a Christian? He was. Mm-hmm. Mm, but he was married. Ah. <laughs> 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 So uh -huh. minute, so what were you doing in that situation with that married man, Christian woman? Oh, and premarital sex as well. If Jesus can't save these hoes, why are you trying? What make you think you greater than Jesus, nigga? Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Did that, that, did that cut a little too deep? No, no, it didn't cut deep, deep I mean, at all. Seriously, he was just extremely I mean, deceptive. Christ he was really Christianity, deceptive. Christianity becomes... Even if he was extremely deceptive, and you didn't know about him being married. You're a Christian person. Why are you having premarital sex? Just keep it moving. There's a lot with modern Christian feminist women. This becomes a way for you to disqualify men. It's not the way that you really qualify men, as I've shown. Mm -hmm. By your own life. It's a way you disqualify men, but it's damn sure not a qualification. Right. Yes. So you're with a man for a year and a half. No, it's been a year and a half. Oh, you were, you were, how long how long were you guys together? It was um, about seven months. Seven months. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> seven months. Mm -hmm. uh, how many times did you take him? I had church? known him for a while, though. I had known him. Oh, for apparently not well enough. How many times take him to church? <laughs> I'm sorry. How many times did you take him to church? I didn't. If Jesus can't save these hoes. Huh? I did not take him to church. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. You didn't take him to church, but you were looking. You want a man that can share for your faith. Mm hmm Yes. But you didn't take him to church? I didn't. I didn't, because I'm I just kind of Because you knew he was married. This man, darling. Security. 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 I love you so much. Stop the cap. Why you always lying? Well, we don't believe you. You need more people. I'm private with my life. For a while. She is so full of shit. Remember the first, go back last year, guys. When I did, when, when I first talked to Tiffany Chanel in Houston. And then I talked to that one sister who went to PV. And she was in her late 30s or 40s. I pull up the interview. Remember when I told her I knew her pastor, Tony Evans? Mm -hmm. I told you guys I know the Dallas scene very well. This is a mirror of that same call. Different woman, same scenario. Similar scenarios. Very similar scenarios. Dallas is littered with this. Ma'am, if you want a man who's really a Christian, why aren't you going to church with that man? Ding, Why ding, is that ding. man going to church with you? Why am your pastor helping you find? Why aren't you in a church that facilitates Christian relationships? Talk to him, Kev. 
you know, I just never thought about reaching out to my pastor about finding somebody, you know, I was a part of the small groups and that was about it. And girls good for fuck, not for cuffing. God damn it. Mm. You don't try to wife no evil. Eh? Oh. Did you see start backtracking and lessening her responsibility by saying she was busy? There was a lot of men younger than her. My church duties got in the way. Women do this all the time when they are confronted with their poor decisions, especially the she slash he woman who will try everything they can to dodge accountability when she is confronted with the truth. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3, the verse Kevin Samuels is referencing. The message. The same goes for you wives. Be good wives to your husbands, responsive to their needs. There are husbands who, indifferent as they are to any words about God, will be captivated by your life of holy beauty. What matters is not your outer appearance, the styling of your hair, the jewelry you wear, the cut of your clothes, but your inner disposition. I don't know, I just kind of like left it at that. She is so disingenuous. It's a reason she didn't. Either one, she really doesn't care about the church thing like she claims she is, or two, she knew that dude was married. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've never really met anyone at the church outside of the the small groups that I was a part of. And I've just never, <laughs> I mean, I talk to my pastor all the time. That's not usually, I'm just never talking to him about relationships. She says she went to this church for 10 years. Stop it. So I submit that you're really not trying to find a Christian man. Exactly. No, I am. It's just that. No, you're, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're saying that, but no. Absolutely, you are not. I've just, I've just laid it out. You didn't even go to church with the man you went to see the, la the last time. Mm hmm So how can you care about, so where did Christianity come up in that? Well, we just, I mean, we pray together. We just didn't go to church. <laughs> right, we also had sex there. together, too. Thank you. He said it. Because I was about to say, y'all did something else. Y'all did a lot more than pray. Premarital sex. Fornication. <laughs> I love Mr. Samuel. I won't deny that. But... Rest in well, peace. Exactly. Rest in peace to the Godfather. But I miss you, big bro. With a married man. Ma'am. I'm saying I had no all idea. I'm saying, I, like, but you I, said you knew him before. Okay. You said you knew I him I did before. know. See what would have happened. Let me, that hold on, let me hold on, hold on, hold on. See what would have happened if you'd have actually picked the man from the church. You would have known one thing: he wasn't married. Exactly. He actually if went you, to Tony Evans's church. He's a I member said, of that you, church. If you'd have, if you'd have picked the man from your church, you'd have known he wasn't married. Exactly. Don't, I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. No matter what other church he went to. Mm -hmm. uh, but the bottom, if you'd have took him to your church, Concord is such a lot. If you took him to your church, somebody would have been like, uh, that man married. You're right. I know. See, Christianity is supposed to shield you from all this, not open you up to all this madness. For you to come and tell me that the problem is the men in Dallas, I would not let you visit that bullshit on them. And I forgot she did open up the car with that. It's funny how it's the men in Dallas, <laughs> not her sleeping with married men. Huh. How about that? When it shows in your life, that the men that you picked aren't even lining up with what you say is important. And in practice, you're not doing these things. So Christianity cannot save you. You're just using it to filter out men that you don't find desirable. Mm-hmm. Wow, where do we go? I mean, that pretty much sums it up. Does it not? I, I mean, we've been echoing this inside the church. And the way the churches are working up there in Dallas, at least there's some communication. So that way, you know, if, if your wife, my wife, whoever wants to go to another church, they'll be like, oh, that's what you call his wife. She's separated from her husband. What's she doing here with that dude? You know, that way, if there's discipline to be made, they're going to approach it. 
and say, hey, uh, where, where's your husband at? You know, the same thing Christ says, where's your husband? You know, the, the part that, that really, and, and and I've been accused, well, I'm not only accused, it's true, of being very hard, abrasive, mean against Christianity as a whole. And not all of Christianity is Christianity, just like not all of Israel is Israel. How do, you can see the fruit on these people. This woman rolled up, and then Kevin Samuels have done this a, a numer numerous of times. But as a believer, does love the Bible. So when a person wants to slide in his in here and ask him questions and want to claim to be Christian, it almost offends him because he it because it offends me. It offends all men out there. It offends some women out there. How are you gonna be a Christian and living like you did ten years ago? Five years ago. That's supposed to be a steady progression. And that's, I just, for the sake of time, I'm not going to put all the, the other clips that I got to follow up on this one, rather than I'll just show a, a, a an example of a two faced preacher. Now, you can go watch the full thing because he's pandering to women, but it starts off, which, I, which, which I'm thinking is an accident, because he's making sense. <laughs> and. All, the older women will stand up before the young, don't, young women don't stand up until he starts talking to them. But anyway, I'll decide if I want to put that in there. Plus another one, so-called Christian lady that showed up on Fresh and Fit. Lord have mercy and thank God. Well, Brother Ben's like, hey man, you're making us look bad. He said the same thing that I, I'm going to have to put that in there. I'm, I, if it's in there, amen. If not, then we know we keep it pushing. But, you know, First Peter chapter 3. I wanted to read that to the message. Now, the message translates it to be uh, husbands. If you read it the way that it's being said, it kind of, it could, it could look to be um, that he's talking about husbands. But, he's, but you know, but he says them because we're talking about husbands. It could lean that way. It could be talking about both. Because, in you know, as you know, from, uh, from the Bible standpoint, it's written from you know from from man to woman so you know so adam was considered who adam and eve it was just adam that's why in the old days you hear oh uh who are you i'm mrs eric miller and people refer to her as such not today but it was like that at one point it was like that at one point but can you imagine hey let's hold on let's pull up that word because it ain't good if we don't pull up the word so we can see it. See it. All right, here we go. So look at this. He said, in the same way you wives be submissive to your own husbands, so that even if any of them, so it sounds like husbands. Now, it ain't going to feel good for, for the ladies out there that want to live like our wives. But it's going to be what it is. Because, listen to what it says. With the, that the context is men that even if any of them them husbands are disobedient to the word if they don't even listen or give heed to God non-believers by the way those that are in the church I just don't want to listen to the word of the Lord man I'm just not feeling it and better yet the poster child of marriage why a marriage union is the ultimate union in God that that free flowing of your to, to get, receive your calling as a man and a woman. The devil tells women, you got to qualify that man. God says, I already justified him. It's done deal. He's looking at you for the wife. He proposes to you. Amen. Let's keep it pushing. Now, I want to have a say. You can, as long as you stay single. And don't get married. Because you start pressuring a man to get married, he don't want to get married to you because he ain't comfortable. He still got some doubts. Which means you as a woman ain't handling your business. Imagine the, the imagine the, the 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 dirty wives club of you know leaving men. It's the 70% club. Imagine that and the consequences that that, that women are suffering with right now. It's because they directly affected that number of why marriage and a decline in the church of men is happening. Feminism, 
All these, all this hatred toward men, all this sweet talking, uh, uh, crackpot, uh, super, super, super apostles, all this nut job stuff that makes women feel good and pander to their stupidity. That's all they want. Because if a man was next to her and she went, look, there was a church I went to in my crazy, in my, my crazy, in my crazy life. And I thought I went to some some crazy ones. Uh, this one wasn't necessarily crazy, more so than it felt uh, monetized. So I go in now, you know, go. It's, it's, I think I've been there like twice, and I and, I, and that twice, man, it, it, it hurt. Ooh, it hurt. Ooh, you you would thought I was getting skinned in a blender. It was not fun. But anyway, so I go in there, and this thing got like million dollar sound system. The Bible, we're going to read the Bible and like the lights drop. And I'm like, what is this? They're going to do a magic trick? What is, what is happening? Here? All pageantry, showmanship, lights, and dazzling silver pieces. Why? Because our women are going to be, oh, look, it, it's, it's so emotional with the lights down. Now he can really preach. Then I got this weak, mealy mouth pastor that rolled out with some, some skinny jeans which make him look like he had two straws and some skinny jeans with like spray painted on. He had them little stick legs and he got up there and started talking about the church budget. That was the big dramatic event, the church budget. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, what the, I didn't even bother touching a Bible. Cause I, it was, there was one in front and I always carry a Bible with me. There's a Bible in the front and I'm sitting there and, and all the alarm bells are going off. I'm like, no, 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 mm -mm. no, 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 no. I look around. Predominantly women. Predominantly women. Some families, they sp they, they spattered in there, led by their women. Because I've seen some of the men in there. I've seen the looks of they in their eyes. That dull, I don't have a say so in my own damn house look. I can't lead my family and shepherd my family because... I don't know nothing. I'm not interested in God because if God gave me this marriage, damn. It's and then it was time to the, to do the and this is something you got to always listen to, brothers and sisters in faith. Y'all got to be careful who you uh uh take 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 a oh my God I'm having a brain freeze. What we do every first every first Sunday, but anyway, uh, communion. You got to be careful. Who you share that communion with, and what kind of church you in? They were sharing communion that 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 Sunday. You want to partake in it? No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm all right, player. Are you sure? I'm great. I say I ain't fellowshipping with this. This ain't Christianity at all. They, they, they what? The only thing that was holy in that building was probably somebody's socks. The dude got excited to talk about the budget. I don't even remember the sermon. I know it was I know it was out of bounds. It was wrong. It was out of context. It was blasphemous. It I'm I'm sure my brain protected me so that way I won't it won't stay in there. So I, I'll have like nightmares like, oh God, he tore the Bible up. And the sad part about it is that it now this that and that church is big. Let me tell you, it ain't no Joel Osteen big, because this dude is definitely a Dollar Tree version of it. But let's talking to some of his people that, that that you know I've I've worked on stuff from them, the people that used to go to that church. It's the here's the people that say the same it's the same uh we cycle wheel of, of, of conversation. Hey man, so what church you go to? Oh, I used to go to this church. Oh man, why'd you leave? Oh man, that that teaching it wouldn't feed me, man. Oh okay, single brother. What wait, what about? Hey, how you doing, man? Blah blah blah. What church you go to? Oh, I go to this church. Oh yeah, man. You didn't? Why'd you leave? You left? Yeah, man. What doing? Where you going? I ain't going to church at all. Why? I just you know I just I, that that don't sound like God. And then I'm just having this is like a, this is a this is a consistent story. Now notice ain't no women leaving. Well, there there probably there are some women leaving. I, I don't know if that you know there's some women leaving somewhere. Thirty percent maybe. But the other 70, they staying in now. And those are the ones that I question have even known God at all. And if they did know God, why are they running from him now? 
this woman, if she got married, I'd be, I'd be concerned. She didn't show discernment to being with this man. She didn't show chastity to be with this man. This is what happens when you're supposed to be a Christian, but you're not acting in the manner in which the Lord God has commanded. Same thing Kevin Samuels is saying in a nice way. It, your Christianity is useless. That Mr. Potato Head God that you made is useless if the only thing you're following is your damn emotions. And that's a woman's territory. That's why there's not a lot of men going to church because it ain't for, it ain't for men anymore. Forty-five to 60%, if a woman goes to church, a member of her family will go. 85%, if a man goes to church, his whole family goes. And this is things that men don't brag about because you, there's nothing to brag about. This is your job. This is our job. And let me tell you, so all these, what he, who these women and, and are spitting on, your wife, my wife, all the wives out there, anybody separated, divorced, you know what they're really, they're showing that God ain't crap. That that word of God means nothing to them. Because here, here's, men don't even get this easy out and women are funking this up. Daily. God gave them an easy out. Just you got one job, Eve. Produce them children. You got one job. Can you handle that? Good. And that's it handles itself for the most part. You just have to introduce each other to each other. The Lord weighs on what's gonna happen, and then that baby's on the way. What's the second job? Respect your husband. Well, he don't do that not respect. God says respect your husband. He didn't say respect your husband unless. He says respect your husband. As you do unto the Lord, which clearly addresses the truth, right? Your wife ain't respecting God. She definitely means she ain't respecting you. If she ain't respecting you, she ain't respecting God. She can't go to God and say, I respect you over my husband because God's going to go, no, no, no. You're not independent of your husband. Where is he? See, that's why women don't want to read this kind of stuff. Women are going to avoid Romans chapter 7. Women are going to avoid all of Timothy. Women are going to avoid... Uh, Philippians chapter 3 and 4 women are going to avoid uh, chapter of uh, John chapter 15 John chapter 16 they're going to avoid Matthew 5 when Jesus is talking about divorce and marriage they're going to avoid well all of the Corinthians for the most part because Paul's talking about how you cannot get a divorce and nor should you even seek it and amazing that 70% of women have basically told my God to hell with you. I can pick a better shepherd of my life than you can. My wife said it. Your wife said it. Your wife over there said it. Somebody's wife in the future go say it. If that brother ever gets married. Women are responsible in this one regard. One job in this case of gospeling. Even God said, look, these women will be saved in childbirth. The fact they're bringing the images of, of, of God through them, that image is still being stamped and made today. Unfortunately, it's made in a lot of con different conditions. Most of, most of all of them sinful. Women having babies outside of wedlock and now raising them babies to be babies. Look, cheap babies. You know, oh, uh, what's that comedian? God, I like listening to him. Oh, goodness. Uh, he called them side babies. Because it didn't have no husband attached to it. 
So them are side babies. Cheap babies. They were made, they were made with sex with no commitment. No commitment to the to shepherding of their souls, no commitment to the shepherding of their lives. And women have chosen men who are incapable of leading and shepherding their lives, and yet that's who they slam in their legs uh, open and shut for. And, and, and I wish I could say we're excluded, but look, let me tell you something. Your wife cheating ain't the biggest thing in your life that can destroy. I can forgive easy, and I do forgive super quick. I thank God that He's taught me, and that that has seemed to be one of those spirit those those spiritual attributes I picked up fast. Somebody asked me, well, if you found out your wife was doing this and doing that and doing that, would you take her back? Yes, absolutely, because I, I know what Hosea went through. If Hosea was called to do it. It, she's my responsibility. So all the stuff she's running around there doing out there, that's on my shoulders. I can take that. I can deal with that. God will help me deal with that. What I will not deal with is a hypocrite. Someone that says they love God, but don't listen to his Bible. Let me tell you, the most dangerous place. To, what if you let me let me let me ask you a question, but I'm going to also answer it as well. Which do you think is safer for your life? Being on a SWAT team, heading into a terrorist and into a terrorist compound to take them capture, or a women's Bible study group led by a woman? Which one do you think is more dangerous? Now, you guys are forward-thinking people. You probably all picked what, what I was about to pick, what I was going to tell you, but it's that woman's Bible study. Eric, you're telling me it's safer to be on a SWAT team heading into a terrorist compound, outnumbered, outgunned to take them down. Your chance of survival is higher on that SWAT team than being in that all-female-led, emotional, abusive, uh, child, uh, child of God molesting women's Bible study. Because whatever dominant woman is in there, she's going to destroy the rest of them. Because there's got to be a there's got to be a woman with a dominant personality in there, and that's usually the one masking as the most. God, she is so well spoken. No, she's just he man. That's all. She's just he man. If she could buzz cut her hair. She'd look. She would just look. She'd look like the the quintessential old school lesbian with the butch haircut and the and and the and the sock in the jeans. Trying to be boss lady with all the nice clothes and all that. All that don't impress God. Let me tell you something. There has never been a female-led Bible study ever in history. There, it, that don't even exist. That's, a, that's, like, that's, like, that's like Harry Potter. It don't exist. What you got is a bunch of idolaters who don't want to listen to a man. Unless that woman is told in total submission to her husband. To when those women listen to her and look at her at that Bible study, if everyone existed. Well, they did back in the old days, you know, back when, you know, Christianity was still real. So I should have said the modern day. The old days, they did. But those women actually also had men around. See, unlike, unlike what society likes to say, you know, you know, Mary and the rest of the ladies, you do know they, was, they were with the apostles the entire time, with all the way up, all the way down. They didn't try to exclude themselves. You don't find women in the Bible trying to figure out, well, where is Deborah so I could feel strong as an independent female? Them women didn't care. They didn't want to be independent of their men. They wanted to be a part of God's calling, which was far more important than these punk-ass women we have today. Excuse my French, I'm sorry. And I'm going to call it like it is. These women are cowards. They're liars and they're hypocrites. Because when the real hard work has to get done, sanctification begins at its most noticeable point in marriage. Sanctification begins at its most noticeable point in marriage. It is a proving ground. 
It's basically you, the new you, and your new your and, and your new you or new them wife. Y'all, y'all's two new natures are clasping together, holding together with everything they got because much like when Adam and Eve were cast out of Garden of Eden, can you imagine how terrified they were? When she finally looked up to Adam in a place that she should have been doing in the Garden of Eden. She did it at first, but then them emotions got triggered. God took what was supposed to be good and the devil's been manipulating them ever since. Emotions, emotions, how you feel about these things. And F your feelings, for real. There are days I don't feel like being married. There are days I wake up, I don't care. I don't wanna do this anymore, it's trash. I, Okay, Father, I hear you. I'm just, I'm in my emotions. I'm draking right now, I'm in my Drake song. Cause truth is, it's still beautiful. Because nothing that God gives you is bad. You know, if God did not want you married to whoever you were married to, it never would have happened. That means God allowed it. That means he kept his word of saying when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and favor. He's allowing men like me and you to go choose the women that we want to be with and build our lives with. And those women reward that with 70 damn percent. These hoes ain't faithful. Mary Magdalene, the original superhead. The girl was out there giving it to everybody. Came crawling and crying to the Lord. She'd make a great wife right now. She would have made a great wife. Because she submitted to the Lord. When the Lord gave her a command, she'd do it. You think it's a shock? That when you go down to verse six right here, just as Abraham, I mean, just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Do you think that's a surprise? When God, and this is first Peter three, that lines up exactly with what? Ephesians chapter five. Called him Lord. Lord, why would you do that? Because what is he doing? He's making the decisions. You know, that's a, well, that's, I don't know if it's a Marine saying, but I saw it in the movie and I saw one of the drill instructors saying it. So it might just be something that he made. So I don't want to misquote that. But um, the biggest thing was he says, man, make a decision. I don't give, I don't give a damn if it's left or right. Make a decision. We got to do something. What is he talking about? Man, we're in a dangerous situation. The longer we stay in this situation, the more the more the threat, the danger can corner can corner us in, put us in a kill box and get rid of us. His point was what? We got to we got to move. I don't give a damn if we're going left or right. You got to make a decision. He's talking to his leader that way. He ain't trying to lead. That's men. That's how men function. And they're going to lead they they going to lead their families in that same position. Sarah had the trust. Hey, look, Abraham was set up when Abraham was just good old Abram, he was set up. His father was known. He had money. He he was he was comfortable in his, his, as a Gentile. Because remember, there was no Israelites at this time. It comes from him. So imagine a Gentile creating the entire of the Israelites. It's kind of amazing. Because from him it started. But anyway, can you imagine him going up to Sarah and saying, Sarah, um, uh, Pack everything. We're we're on the move. Okay. She might have asked, "What's going on?" Uh, uh, God, uh, God, God told me we got to get up and leave. And you know, do I have time to get? Do I have time to get the sandals? Let me tell them. Let me tell the girls to get their stuff packed. We'll be waiting at the gate for you. She didn't do what modern women would do. Well, you got to give me a good reason because we got it good. If you live, where are we going to go living on the damn street? Where are we going to go living in the desert? We got a nice place right here. You got a mansion we living in. Now you're going to take the whole of us out there as a caravan. We could be killed. I could be towed up. And, what's wrong with you, Abram? Abra? You ain't heard from God. I'm going to say what most women will say in the situation. It seems that what I believe and what you believe are two different things. You didn't hear that. 
Because because Sarah wasn't interested in combating with her husband. Like at all. She's not even interested. She never was interested. She wanted to be a good wife to her husband. Period. How are you going to be a Christian woman and you are crap at a wife? How are you going to be a good, a good wife when your husband ain't taught you some things to help improve your skill set? Because God has given him them, those instructions. Well, he didn't grow fast enough. It ain't your time to table that things happen. You know, God has put people front and center in my life. Well, they put he put me front and center in their life to see the changes that God has done in my life. And the first thing I started to really look at, and I know I shouldn't have done this, but I started to look and go, I wonder what they doing. Because I'm seeing the same damn people. I, I saw the same people when I was dead. Now that I'm alive, I can see why they're doing the same thing. I can see why they're dead. And I'm sitting there going, man, uh, I don't know if I would go that route if I were you, dog. Oh, man, you think you're so high and mighty. No, I just made them mistakes and I, and I died for it. The Lord had to come get me. I couldn't dig myself out of that. But see, when you, when you look at your wife and you look at who taught her how to be a wife, I guarantee you, if her, whatever her mama's status is, that's your status. Unless she just wanted them for, and they exist. Then Proverbs 31 women after verse 4. Then women that ain't trying to hear complaining against their husband. Because their husband, you know what, we talk about it a lot. Let's let, let let's close this out with a treat. For us, man, y'all need to see a treat. Y'all need we you you hear the you hear the stuff that's going on about how bad you are getting attacked. But I want to hear what God. I want you to see what God considers a worthy woman. Let's go ahead and I want to simplify for myself so we can push through and I don't hang up too much. So check this out. So this is in praise of a wife of noble character. Notice noble character not dubious not emotional this ain't the 70 percent this is the 30 percent this the 30 percent of women that stay in their marriages because to hell or high water i ain't losing my marriage listen to this who can find a wife of noble character she is far more precious than jewels we already get the idea and the truth of it's kind of rare aren't they God, you didn't tell me they're like unicorns? Well, they're not exactly like unicorns. More like my, you know, my little ponies. Oh. So a little pink? No, whatever, son. The heart of her... Oh, Lord, have mercy. Can you imagine your girl... Look, fellas, right now, stop real quick. And you can apply this to you ladies, too. It's just... It, it, you might actually have a decent man, but if your man ain't decent, then, you know, and you're doing all these things, then, and your man ain't decent, something in your spirit ain't, ain't, ain't affecting him. So you, there, there's a there's a deficiency there, but we can discuss that another day. But listen to this, because this is important, man. This is why a Proverbs 31 woman is not a threat to you, but she is what when God says when He finds this kind of woman, not only will God you're blessed, but God says I'm going to give you favor. I'm going to give you extra on top of how good you. Ooh, you found your wife, Eric. All right, I'm going to give you this is your portion too. This is the favor that I'm going to give to protect your stuff. But when you have an uncooperative mate. That are that designed and built and now endorse the disagreement with their men, with men as a whole. That favor doesn't go away. But then Eric, what, what's happening with it? And why is it if my wife ain't around and God says, I'll give you favor, but my wife ain't around, did God lie? No. You just you just didn't marry a Proverbs 31 woman. That's all. You married a non-believer. Look, I'm being. I'm. Be, this is honest as I can get, and it will hurt feelings. But I don't. I really don't give a damn. They spit on God. I'll spit on them. Eric, that's not turning the other cheek. I ain't there yet. I'm a marriage advocate. I. I, I did not say I was an advocate against anti-violence. That I'm getting there. But listen, there's a there's some things that the Proverb 31 woman. From from verse ten down, okay. So not so anything ten up, ten and up is bad. 
10 down is good. Isn't that amazing? The submissive woman. That woman that the Lord loves to death. This is the kind of ideal. Sarah was the, 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 ooh, the character and architect of what a real woman looks like. Everything that acts in contrary to Sarah ain't crap. There are hypocrites, they're liars, and the Bible is subjective. You can tell them I said so, and I can prove it to their face. Divorced women are already disqualified. Matter of fact, you want to hear something even funnier? Do you know there's not, ooh, I don't want to go, I don't want to get too much in, but do you know there's no safety net for the divorced woman in the Bible? There is for widows. Your husband died, the church has protection for you. You divorce your husband, you pretty much ostracized. I don't have a problem with that. I think divorced women should not be allowed back in church until they reconcile with their husbands. I wish if I had my church again, I would do that. And you ain't going to be up in here sinning. You ain't going to be in here trying to lure another man to, to try to get... That ain't not in here. Because I am going to call the church they've been to previously. And if they if they just... If they're completely unschooled in the ways of the Lord, then the Lord will guide me on what to do gently with them. If they have said they've been with the Lord, I, I can come at their kidneys. I can punch. What's your husband at? Oh, we don't separate. He goes to another church. Then you can't come in here? You ain't gonna bring that evil in here. Mm -mm. I don't. I don't care. I don't need no donations. <laughs> you you can keep all that. You just take your money someplace, put it in a slot machine or something. Get you some new nails. That you know what? Some Dollar Tree's got some false hair. Go get some of that and, and have fun. But listen to this, fellas. How important it is. Cause my dad. I think I told y'all this before. But my dad said, um, "God bless, man. There are only two decisions a man has to make in his life: where he goes spend his eternal life and who he marries. Both of those have." Tremendous outcomes of success and dire consequences. But on the plus side, being a man, God can restore and fix anything. Except a person that just don't believe in him. If you're trying to say our wives that left us, they don't believe, they don't believe in God. No, I don't think they do. Matter of fact, no, 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 no. I take that back. I know they don't. It's not, it's not, and I can prove it to them. Remember, I any time. You want to come in here and disprove what, what I said about this Bible? You go right ahead. I bet a thousand. I don't miss because it's about God, not me. I'm only echoing what he's saying. And I don't even have to interpret things to try to make it say something that it don't. I let the Bible speak for itself. I don't go seeking nothing. I go to the Bible and hate everything about everything and let the Lord clean me up. So I can so I can eat properly. I don't go in there with an agenda. Women do that a lot. Oh, I want to go see what do the women of the Bible. Who cares? Really, who cares? Because God don't make distinctions in that area. It ain't a you're gonna honor her. Why? You will be honoring Jesus. Because all those women are honoring Jesus. So the one thing that they didn't learn from those women of the Bible is honor Jesus. And yet they go and look at how what great things they do. All the women of the Bible they talk about are these big heroes. All them women would be given the thumbs thumbs down to our women today. Sarah would be disgusted. Jezebel, on the other hand, would be look at she'd be saying, "Look at all these hoes and no ambition and no drive and no God, because she don't believe in God either." So they'd get along just fine. Yo, that Jezebel spirit. Whoo -hoo, it's, it's, it's alive and well, free and successful, winning by destroying souls and households. But listen to why, how important it is. Now, if your woman are doing these things, hug her, kiss her, hold her, cherish her, protect her, because that is what God loves to see in a woman. If your woman is not like that, you need to be praying with me. <laughs> So listen to this, and let me show you how important it is for this woman to be the kind of woman that God says, yeah, that, that's it right there. That's the woman that I love. That's the woman I love. Who can find a wife of noble character? Interesting, right? Who can find a woman like that? Does she exist? Notice there's a hint of, are there any out there? Now, understand, we just read that 
when he said, what should I say to my son? What that or his mother might taught him. What should I say to my son? Mother, good mom right here talking to her son. Son, listen to this. What son of my womb? What son of my vows? Don't spend your energy on women or your efforts on those who destroy kings. Any energy. That means anything. If you can call, if you can say that man's a simp, you better not be doing anything that he's doing. I can tell you right now, a lot of that is going to be when you're not doing what the Lord has called you to do because you've probably been shamed in doing it. You start listening to liberals when they start telling you men that the law don't exist and this, that, and the third, and yet everything in his Bible that has, he has said has come to pass. You see it right now. We can go through it together. You talk about a man that was a, an atheist for 27 years. Listen to this. Let's go back to Proverbs 31. Oh, my God. And thank you for staying with me a little bit. I am, um, we definitely have went longer than I expected. But of course, if you've been on the channel long, you know, that's what we do here. Long form content. But listen to this. So who can find a wife of noble character? She is far more precious than jewels. I agree with that. Listen, fellas, can you deal with number 11? The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will not lack anything good. Look at the second one. She rewards him with good, not evil, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with willing hands. She's like a merchant ship, bringing her food from far away. It's one woman working hard, isn't she? She ain't got time to sit up there and be gossiping with, with them hoes. Her mama taught her good, didn't she? She rises while it's still night and provides food for her household and portions for her female servants. I remember mom told me this one, uh, one time when we were when I when I was started the road back in 2005 to where I'm at today because that's when it all the ball started to roll. My mom was still I lived with my mom, mom at the time when I uh, came for, came back from uh, came back from Colorado. Not came back from Colorado um, when um, uh, I moved out of my ex's house and so we're living. I'm, I'm back at home. God bless that man. Um, and my mom will still be getting up four in the morning. And by the time I'm getting up to go to work, she go, I got to cook you some breakfast. My mom was still doing Proverbs 31 stuff. And my dad, my dad, and my dad bounced on us. Right. And my dad returned to my life as, as you know, not, not that him and mom didn't reconcile, but my dad returned to my life. Praise God. I had to get, I got both my parents back not in the most ideal situation, but to see them talk and be able to hang out for the small amount of time she had left. It was, it was a beautiful thing. And I said, I beg God, I just want to see that as a human being. Can I see what all, whatever other parents, you know, kids, other young men wanted to see. But I remember my mom used to tell me, if your girl ain't getting up trying to get you, get, get your day started, some other girl will. So you got to be careful. I, I kept that, that lesson. That's how men, we fall victim. To them Jezebels. Because your, your lady don't want to do her part. So somebody else, Hagar, wants to do the part. Now she may not be doing it after you get her. <laughs> but the lure in the trap is there. She rises while it's still night and provides food for her household. And portions for her female servants. Everybody like our wife. Everyone likes this wife. Man, that, your wife is the bomb. We sh and God says everyone should have a wife like this. All my Christian sons and adopted sons, I want y'all to all have wives like this. I know what you're thinking, God, but where the hell are they? You know what he's going to ask you? Are you in a relationship with me? You trust me? Because in order to get you out of a situation, you got to remember that you got in now. Once you can acknowledge that, them ears because all men naturally are inclined to hear God much like Adam even those non-believers who raise children the right way it's almost like they got it from the Bible but they didn't but yet they did because God says I've written it on their hearts Gentiles you gotta remember the Israelites were given the holy word in stone form twice 
we didn't have those. Those were meant to show what was written on our hearts, where it came from. Israel was the first, was designed and built to be the beacon to the world that there is a God in Israel who will save you from sin. And they failed. But God didn't. In their house, God was still, why do you think so many times he protected Judah? Judah was that line that Christ was going to get born through. And with all the mishaps and all the evils, Jesus came. Jesus came. And here we are today, still in being that the believers and non-believers, God is still guiding you. That's how you have traditional principles. You may not believe where you got, but you know where you learned them from? Your parents did it. So then you start mimicking your parents. That's how it's supposed to be, right? My wife, your wife, all right. You, look, look at them mom. Look, look at their moms. If their moms didn't do it, we ain't gonna get it. So it's our responsibility to do what? Train our wives. And the only way we can train our wives, we gotta trust our wives. The only way that can work is if our wives are in submission to, to us and trust God. You see how mangled the story is around that simple understanding? Even non-believers know good from evil. Because so you think a non-believer, Christianity, I use air quotes here, have you thinking of stuff you've seen in Hollywood? Whether it's the exes, the bad guys, or good guys. A quote unquote. But that's just that's just not true. Let's read out and close out. Listen to this. She evaluates a field and buys it. She plants a vineyard with her earnings. She's thoughtful. She ain't trying to get Beyonce tickets. The husband say we can't afford Beyonce tickets. Case closed. He's she may myth, but she I trust my husband. I respect my husband because I respect God. And and boom. Imagine if that conversation was heard. With and her friends were around, and that girl answered op in the opposite direction. If she went, because that TikTok is out there, and I ain't go, I ain't going on TikTok to try to find it because that's disgusting. But imagine if the situation was was switched, and she said, "Well, she could, well, can I just have the thousand dollars? You you don't have to give me a birthday gift. You ain't got to give me stockings. You ain't got to clean the car. I just want to go to Beyonce tickets, get Beyonce tickets, and let's go." Baby, you know we got to save for a house and we just got to tighten up. Stay focused. If she would have said, yes, babe. Appreciate you, appreciate you keeping me on track. And she was around her friends, Christian friends, she would have got roasted. Don't you tell, don't no man tell you what to do. That's your money too, girl. Go pull that money out. And now we got an Ike Turner moment. Because her girlfriends got her in trouble. Why? Because she allowed the devil to get there. Feminism and the devil are so close you can't you you would never even know he's the architect until you understand. It's about dis, dis, uh, mangling and dismantling the image of God for the image of a woman. Why do you think Elon Musk, the Twitters, the TikToks, the Instagrams, the uh, why do you think I have fled to podcasts? and just YouTube, like almost primarily. Because there's so much boobs and, 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 and backside and, and, and there's more pornography. You don't gotta go to Pornhub, you can go to Twitter. There's no restriction on there. You can put all everything on there. And your kids and your babies are on there. Well, maybe you're not, you're a good parent, you don't let that happen. But I'm just saying, that's just, you can go to Facebook, but you know, you'll age like 10 years the minute you, you push a button. But all these things that are out there telling and showing women, women, it's always a mixed message, right? First, sexuality, become embrace your sexuality, show your body. Now go lay down and sleep with whoever man you that, that you deem fit and call yourself, well, I, I, I slammed him and now I'm going to go about my business. Like somehow you're a man. You're just devaluing yourself. And the devil knows it. That's exactly why he loved that whole culture. Why? Because it devalues the woman to where she, what will happen? No children. When a woman cannot bear children, 
not because of some uh, ab anomaly that has harmed her body to where she can't create the eggs, the ovary, or whatnot. We're not talking about that. We're talking about women who can't have children because they become so toxic to the touch that no one wants to put their, their child in that woman. Because guess what? Some of what makes her what she is will bleed into that child and you will have a war on your hands. So they're just choosing. No, you know, the toughest thing that I had to come to terms with this year were the two babies that were take that you know that that were aborted against my will. One I did one I couldn't well both I couldn't stop because I didn't know when they happened. Only right now did I realize I thought that God has prevented me from being in a situation that could have condemned me in areas and ways that you could have imagined. My babies went to heaven early to be spared from the kind of mother they that I, I and and a uh, uh, baby dad. I didn't want to be a baby daddy. I, I asked God, I don't want to be this way. And he prevented it. This is my first start into, into any of this. And it's, you look back at that, that's that long range trust in God that I didn't even know I understood that he was faithful to me when I asked him as a child, when I still went to church, when I still believed, and he kept his word all the way up until now. He's still keeping his word. And that word strengthens me to where when I have weak moments, like last night, I was like, man, my wife don't want nothing to do with me right now. She thinks I'm the most evil guy in the world. Now, I'm not a criminal, so I must I'm, that must make me terrible that I'm not a criminal. But I, I just, I wanted to, I, I felt that need to just, I, I, you know, I remember I was, being, I was being rebellious, by the way, because I'm like, I don't want to think about my wife. This is suck, God. This is just terrible. This ain't happening. I felt it by loneliness, and I was like, you know, it, it's like I know I can get out there and do what I need to do if I wanted to, right? I can get out there and find, but is that what would that prove, right? This is what, this is what exactly I started to think about. As far as God has brought me along to now realize to be jumping in bed with with female after female, married or not, is just spitting on the image of God. They, that's when it started to really hit me. That it will take away my testimony. It'll destroy my testimony. The minute I start acting in my old self. Oh, see, you're a hypocrite too. That scares me more than anything else, brothers and sisters. To be, to be labeled a hypocrite and, they, and people be right. Clearly it don't bother any of our wives. And, and, uh, and husbands out there too. But it bothers me. It bothers me when women like this get up here. Oh, I'm a Christian church man. Why? Are you just going to break him? Because when God finally strips that man bare and a Proverbs 31 woman is supposed to be there to what? Lick the wounds. Because God's making that man into a man. And she trusts God and she trusts her husband to submit to the Lord and to carry the family forward. Because her mama raised her right. She draws strength. She draws on her strength and reveals that her arms are strong. She sees that her prophets are good and her lamp never goes out at night. She extends her hands to the spinning staff and her hands hold the spindle. Her hands reach out to the poor and she extends her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows for all in her household are doubly clothed. She makes her own bed coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known at the city gates where he sits among the elders of the land. What would you might be thinking? Well, how, why is her husband known? We just read 1 Peter. That if there's some disobedient husbands out there, they'll look, Eric, man, your wife is the man. A and you're married, dog? Yeah, we're married, whatever, whatever. Why? Wow. I was always scared to get married, man. But, you know, when you're, I see you, I, I've known you for this long and your wife is just doing all this what the Bible says. And I see y'all prayed up and I, I know y'all struggle, but man, I want a wife like that. That's how it's supposed to be. But women are failing at that. And blaming their bad decisions on the men that God is raising up to be their shepherds. Because they can't see. Because the devil's already blinded them. They've already bought in. 
God gave women a no-brainer. He gave them an early warning system to where even if stupidity takes over, they'll know evil is about. Period. This lady had no discernment that that man was married, which basically means she ignored it. Because him being married, his times of seeing her would have always been a little suspect. If he does spend the night over, what are the rituals that he has to do? What does he do with his phone? She knew all this. It just, it was, wasn't important. She was important. I didn't take him to church because she knew he was a married man. That, that, you, what, that woman ain't dumb. Stupid, but she ain't dumb. Remember, stupid by definition, not by derogatory. But you know, that's why people know her husband at the gates. Because, why? Because his wife is making a name for him. For him. For him. Not her. Him. I want my husband to shine. You know, Jezebel, as bad and as she was, she wanted to make her husband happy. The, the t she loved her husband. Unfortunately, she was an evil, you know, and got him killed. But she wanted to make him happy. So even Jezebel had better than these hoes today? Damn. You know it's bad when, when Jezebel had a good quality over our women. <laughs> All right, we'll close out with this. Listen to this. Oh, ooh, listen to this. This is good. Verse 24, she makes and sells linen garments. She delivers belts to the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. And she can laugh at the time to come. Her mouth speaks wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. Now, I ain't gonna lie. My, my wife could watch over that household like, like, a, like a bear looking at her cubs. And I, I, and I felt it. It was even over me. And I know what y'all thinking. Eric, what was the most... You, what you done had to be the most evil thing on this earth to wind up where you're at. Actually, I'm not. I know someone who's done far worse has but gets far more uh mercy than i do but that's how christianity works quote unquote in christianity it's called that it's christianity in america is conditional as long as the conditions are there you're okay with them the minute you don't match the conditions that they perceive as good or valuable then it doesn't matter about your faith anymore doesn't matter if you actually are a servant of God or not. They just don't care, because you're not serving their idol. You're not serving. They're not. You're not serving their potato head. She watches over her activities of her household and never idle. Her children rise up and call her blessed, and her husband also praises her. Can you imagine praising that crazy ass? Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Can you imagine praising that girl that you sitting? But this is what God wants you to have, fellas. Non-believer, believer. God wants you to have this kind of woman. He even ensured it by in, in 1 Corinthians when he said, look, if you, if fellas, if you marry a non-believer, you absolutely cannot get divorced. Even if she was unfaithful, you could not get divorced because the power that you, that God has given by the sanctification process, the justification process, the fact that you are born again that literally covers your wife. That's how powerful marriage is. It extends from that man out. And if you're a woman and you married a man as a heathen, but guess what? He doesn't try to restrict you from the Lord. He, he, he's, he, he's respectful of your beliefs. He's never got nothing nasty to say. He's receptive. You don't leave him either. Because he gets that covering and will enter into heaven. Because that should give you an idea, the hidden gospel of marriage. That your marriage to a Christian can save your life. Now you got to make sure that you're uh, with that person. Yeah, we ain't talking about like you just laid down with them and you ain't married to them. And, no, you got to be in the marriage, man. 
and her, and her kids and husband blesses her. Love and instruction and wisdom comes out of her mouth. Man, I don't know about you, man, but I've... Woo! Well, that's, that's, that's like a desert. It's just scant. Not much to drink on that. Many women have done noble deeds, but you surpass them all. Your wife, my wife, needs to have these girls today look at, get on TikTok and hate on our wives because we're bad. Our wives are bad, bad girls. Not in the sense bad, but bad isn't good. Y'all remember that? Uh, well, I'm, I'm a little older, of course. I'll see if I can find that clip and stick it in here. Dwayne Wayne married Whitney. There was a part in Different different World where he comes in. This is after they graduated. He's a professor at the college. He, he goes in. They've been, him and his wife been fighting. And he rolls up and says, I can. He, and he says, hey, where are you at? We need to get this solved. He says, I can live without the whatever, but I can't live without you. And then, and then he says, come on, right? And so he walks off. And then the girl looks and he turns and says, come on. And then those girls look at her and she's like, bye. And she went with her husband. I was so proud. And all the people were clapping. That wasn't that long ago. These girls today, I feel bad, man. It don't look good for you young brothers. But I just wanted to read this to you. And this, this was important to give you, not just for the episode, to give you some hope of what to look for in a woman. If she ain't doing it before you get married, you don't get married. Use this list. Saved or unsaved man, use this list as your qualifier. And God will grant ooh, when you find her, you ring it up. Don't you get don't you get nervous? You ring it up. Let's just read this last part and I'll let you guys go. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Give her the reward of her labor and let her works praise her at the city gates. These are the kind of women that we all want. And church has turned our women out. They're making our women, as Pearl says, because that's an episode two I need to discuss, but we'll just do it. That's the good news about YouTube, right? We can just push that to another episode and cover another topic that has that in there. But the church destroys our women every day. And that's why I don't blame the atheists. And I don't hate the atheists. That's why I don't blame the non-believer for looking at us and going, man, your God ain't, ain't, ain't crazy. Yeah, I get it, man. I, it looks that way. Because we got to deal with, we got to answer for these idiots. But anyway, uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and listening to the uh, listening to the the video or the podcast, however you come about it. Um, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel. A like would be amazing. You can you can drop your comment. Love to see what you guys are, are cooking up out there. Um, most importantly, I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for giving me the opportunity for even to sit here and speak with you. And you have spent your time your valuable time to hang out with me and i pray that you gain some insight for this that you can use and apply to what's going on in your life i'm praying for you guys i love you very much in jesus name amen oh by the way them hoes ain't law trying to raise a dog by treating him like a cat let me explain see a cat he could come and go as he please. A cat is inside the house. A cat has a litter box. A cat has a, a food that is on timer. You crack they darn food off in cans and it's really sophisticated. A cat is really taken care of. But that dog, he's outside tied up on a darn chain. You give him your leftovers, your scraps, what you don't want. Then every once in a while you want to show off in front of company and you want him to be tough. Now see, the thing about that, you, you, you can't expect that cat to be a dog in front of company. And that's our problem. I know you still have on designer clothes, but you gotta learn some of these things because you're gonna need both. I like that privileged being, but I need that hood tendency. Victory lap though. Whoa, whoa, they ain't never seen nothing like.